In this video, we'll be talking about PRB and its role in cell cycle regulation and in context of retinoblastoma. So PRB is a protein which is tumor suppressor in nature. That means it would suppress uncontrolled growth or cancer formation. So how does it do it? So basically PRB regulates several aspects of the cell cycle. It is encoded by the RB1 gene. So the mRNA of PRB eventually getting translated into the PRB protein. So first of all, we have to understand how PRB regulates the cell cycle. It turns out there is a critical point during the time of cell cycle, which is known as R point or restriction point. And at the restriction point, the cell assess the internal and external condition and determine is it wise to proceed in the cell cycle or should the cell cycle be paused? So that is why PRB is a critical player in the restriction point. It would take that critical decision whether to go forward or whether to halt. So PRB basically regulates another important transcription factor known as E2F or or elongation factor 2f so basically this particular factor is really important for s phase progression now basically once prb encapsulate this factor the cell cycle progression is paused now in order for the cell cycle to move forward prb should separate out from the e2f once E2F is free from PRB, cell cycle progression can be resumed. So what is it happening? E2F basically binds to specific region that produces the cyclin E and cyclin E is re required for replication in the S phase. E2F bind to the cyclin E gene and basically lead to its transcription. So cyclin E is produced with the help of E2F. Now E2F can only do its job when PRB let it do its job. So when PRB is bound with E2F, it cannot bind to the DNA. But when the PRB is basically phosphorylated with the help of cyclin D and CDK4-6, then the hyperphosphorylated variant of PRB releases the E2F. And now E2F can bind to the DNA and allow the progression of the cell cycle from G1 to S. So cyclin D and CDK4 is a key player. But let me remind you that cyclin D CDK4 is also regulated by the growth factor availability. So growth factor signaling lead to the production of cyclin D. So that is why when there is too much of growth factor, there would be cyclin D production and suppression of the PRB activity. Thereby cell cycle can progress into the next stage. That simply tells us Cell cycle is highly co coordinated with the nutrient availability and PRB, cyclin D all work in that interface to regulate the nutrient availability and the cell cycle progression. Now there could be problems in the RB1 gene, there could be mutations in the RB1 gene which lead to retinoblastoma which is an aggressive form of the cancer in the retina. So you can see the retina looks like this in a uh, retinoblastoma situation. So obviously the mutant RB1 gene is unable to produce a functional PRB protein. So once the protein is non-functional, cellular aspects are abrogated. So let's say we talk about three situations. First of all, let's say there is a growth factor present in the media. So obviously cell would be dividing, right? Cell would get the nutrient, necessary nutrient to divide. So PRP would be hyperphosphorylated at this situation. E2F can bind to the DNA, cyclin E can be produced. Cell cycle can move from G1 to S. Imagine a situation when growth factor is absent. In this case, E2F would be inhibited by PRB and PRB would not be phosphorylated. So obviously cell cycle progression would be halted and cyclin E won't be produced. But imagine a situation where there is no growth factor in the media, but PRB is mutated. Even if PRB should be inhibiting E2F, it cannot in inhibit E2F because it is non-functional. In, in, in that condition, even if there is no growth factor, cell cycle progression would happen, cell would grow and divide, but there is no uh, appropriate situation for growth. So this kind of dysregulation of the cell cycle happens in the PRB mutation, which often lead to cancer. Now there is a famous hypothesis by Alfred Knudson, who was actually an American physician and genetics. He had a hypothesis called two-hit hypothesis. 
So he says most of the genes require two mutations to cause a phenotypic change. The first hit involves the inheriting of one mutation from the parents and the second hit could be often acquired from the environment so it can be sporadic. So that is why sporadic events are most more rare compared to the familial events. It turns out retinoblastoma is a, a complicated cancer in the retina which has two forms familial and sporadic. Now he concluded that uh, inherited retinoblastoma occurs at a younger age than sporadic one and in addition children with inherited retinoblastoma are often more likely to develop the tumor in both the eyes suggesting already there is some sort of thing which is wrong there is some kind of predisposition is already there this thought lead to the understanding how prb regulates the cell cycle so this was a critical thought and inference made by him so basically prb is expressed by both the locus in the chromosome that would that each or any of these locus can produce a functional prb now imagine one locus is gone due to a mutation that means still prb would be produced from the other locus some amount of prb would still be there but imagine a situation that then both these alleles are mutated then there would be no production of the functional prb protein none of the allele can produce functional prb so in that prb deficiency or prb functional deficiency would lead to retinoblastoma development so this talks about the two hit both these allelic variants allelic copies are hit actually now this is extremely rare in terms of probability right the chances that both the alleles are mutated would be obviously lesser compared to one allele mutated versus no allele mutated right so that is why there is the familial retinoblastoma is more likely to have an early onset because we should ask the question what is the likelihood that two copies of the rb1 gene would be non-functional if there is a familial predisposition the likelihood that second copy would be mutated first would be very high compared to a sporadic one where at the time of birth both the alleles were functioned two mutations has to be acquired simultaneously and that takes time so that is why most of the cases sporadic forms of retinoblastoma has a later onset so this kind of tells us what is the two hit hypothesis so obviously likelihood of getting uh, cancer is more high in case of familial uh, uh, familial retinoblastoma compared to a sporadic one so in this video we learn how prb regulate the cycle by modulating the cyclin e expression and holding the e2f uh, captive and later on we looked at two hit hypothesis which tells us two mutations are required for most of the genes to create some sort of phenotypic outcome so i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up and uh, you can support our channel using super thanks which is a heart shape icon in the right hand side of the video you can pay via paytm paypal or upi see you in next video